So the demonstration I'm going to do for you is doing a scene switch. So people wanted to know how to do like a fade out, where a scene switches from you know one scene and then there's a fade to black, and then we switch to another scene. So this is uh, surprisingly straightforward. There's not a lot you have to do, but it is a little bit foreign. It's not intuitive. So let me show you the, the example project. I didn't put much time into making it clever or anything, so it just starts off. We're in, in the computer lab. The cat goes and starts programming, and then it's going to go out, and then it fades to black, and then it's another scene, and it goes, and then the cat does some dance. How do you do that? Well, that's what I'm about to tell you. That's it. And he dances the tango, and it just starts dancing. And there's this color changing thing going on that uh, can be kind of fun to do as well. So the cat dances the dance of love. So the main thing I wanted to show you is sort of the, uh, the scene switching idea. So just to let you know, the scenes are just different backdrops. And I have two backdrops. They're terribly stretched out, so I didn't spend much time finding particularly good ones. But really, it's just a matter of switching backdrops. And I'll show you the scripts that are doing that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll sh tell you about the graphic effects in a little bit. So basically, I just start at one backdrop, and I wait a certain amount of time, and then I switch to another backdrop. But in that eight seconds that I'm giving my character, my character has sort of a bunch of things to do. So this is the cat script. So I just kind of reset the cat at the beginning, and then I'm just gliding out, I'm talking, I'm gliding back, I'm waiting, I'm gliding out, I'm talking, and then I'm dancing. So this kind of script is sort of what we've already done before. Right? We're just using weights to control things. But how is it that, that I kind of make the scene switch? Well, it's all I have to do is get all my characters sort of off screen and then so it doesn't look like a big like sudden change I have this big black uh, curtain sprite it's just a big black rectangle see it's just a rectangle that's all it is and I you can choose any color you could fade to white you could fade to you know magenta you could do whatever it is you want to fade to so for me uh, this is a script I'm using I'm using something called the ghost effect so ghost effect is under looks, and there's actually a bunch of effects. You won't see ghost effect, you'll actually see color effect. But you can select from any of these different effects. There's all these great different effects to use. And this is a great way, by the way, if you're like, huh, how do I like go to the next level of programming for this to get high quality marks? Well, you don't have to do this, but one way is to experiment with effects and see what you can come up with. Uh, putting in a fade curtain like we're doing here is, is a good way. So ghost starts at 100. That means it's invisible. You have to manually set it to there. Everything is default visible, right? Uh, default uh, value is ghost zero. So if I set it to ghost 100, that means that this, this black rectangle is invisible. And then I wait seven seconds. I'm waiting seven seconds because that's how long it takes the cat to talk about, you know, I program by day, click, clack, blah, blah, and then it like glides in and out. That takes time, right? So I just counted that, it took seven seconds for us to do its thing. And then I use the repeat loop. So the repeat loop is a fantastic loop for doing all sorts of kind of animations. Take a look at it, let's just look at it like all by itself for a second. So the repeat loop just says, I'm gonna do what's ever inside of me, however many times I type in here. So you can type any number you want. Uh, it will just repeat whatever's inside, ten, in this case, 10 times. And there's a built-in delay inside of every repeat loop. It will slow things down so that it doesn't happen as fast as it can possibly do it. It'll happen at a, at a frame rate that will make things like animation uh, and, and scene changes and, and effects like that sort of thing happen nice and naturally. So it's sort of, you don't have to stick a weight in there to slow it down. It's sort of built-in uh, weight inside of here that you can't see. So what does this do? So we repeat 10 times, change ghost effect by minus 10. So if it started at 100, and I change it by minus 10, it's going to go down to 90. And then if I change it by minus 10 again, it goes to 80. And then 70, 60, 50, 40. And if we do it 10 times, we'll get to 0. So what is 0? Zero? 0 is solid. So that's what happens when the, the fade curtain is fading in. It's this loop right here that's making that action happen. And then I wait a second. 
there, during that one second, the curtain is black. So you just wait there. Uh, and that during that time, that's when you're going to switch the scene. That's when you're going to change the backdrop. That's when you're going to make different things hide and show. And uh, then you can repeat 10 times change ghost effect by positive 10. So we're going to add it all the way back up to 100. And that's what makes the scene, uh, or the, the curtain fade away. And then it's actually, things aren't fading to black. The curtain's just fading in to make the scene go black, and then fading out to make the scene reappear. And then last thing I actually didn't program in here, I recommend having a go-to front. There's this nice go-to front block. So go-to front just means it's on top of everything else. So you don't have the scene like fade out and the cat's like awkwardly kind of sitting on top of your, your fade out curtain. So does that make sense, everybody, of how you can make that black curtain sort of fade in to black out the scene? If it doesn't make sense, please give it a try and see what you can do with it. And then, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, just going to run it again. And we're going to wait seven seconds. The first repeat 10 where we change by minus 10, that's what made it black out. And now, to bring it back, it's changed ghost effect by positive 10. So that's sort of our, our ticket to uh, making a scene change. And of course, in the disco or whatever this is, this nightclub thing, I was using the change color effect. Doesn't look like it's working too well. Uh, I guess I only did it 10 times, that's why. We'll do it 1,000 times. And then you can experiment with what the change color effect does for you. There's a lot of fun things you can do with it. I find the smaller the number is, the more exciting it is. So here we go. It's just, it's just sort of making it look like the, light, the lights are kind of flashing just by doing the change color. To change color, all it does is it will cycle through all the different colors for each pixel. So if it was green, it will go through the spectrum to go to all the other colors as well. It's only for the stage that's happening, though, because this is where I programmed that in the stage. If I did it in the cat, well, the cat would be the thing that gets it. So we can make the cat glow in all sorts of crazy ways. <laughs> Why not? Here we go. Instead of uh, dancing the tango, he's going to become the recipient of an experiment on radiation and such. So now the color changes in the cat, and the cat will just cycle through the colors and go to orange and green and, and blue and all sorts of crazy colors. But those aren't the only effects, so take a look at all these crazy effects you can experiment with. Fish eye, whirl, pixelate, mosaic and brightness as well as color and ghost. So feel free to experiment with those things. Oftentimes it's it, putting that change effect in a loop will be what makes it really exciting. And then last but not least, uh, if you want at the beginning of the project to reset all that stuff, you can just clear graphic effects. It's in looks. Something that will just clear the, all the color changes and the whirls and the pixelates. Any kind of thing that you did with the effects to mess things up, clear graphics effects will work. So I know from experience this, uh, this fade curtain concept uh, often trips people up and they'll go to do it and they're not too sure. So I'll upload this to YouTube so you can watch the video again. And uh, if you have problems, you're trying to do it, then you can take a look at that. And if that doesn't work still, then call me over and I'll help you out. Thanks, everybody.